right, what's going on YouTube? This is BXBomber718, and I'm here with a benchmark test video on the ASUS ROG Flow Z13. All right, so right now we have Army Crate opened up. I'm going to run some benchmark tests. Okay. So we go here to the bench tab, and then it does a multi-thread and single-thread benchmark test. So we're going to click down here and click on Bench CPU. I'm going to move it aside so you can keep an eye on the temperature while we do this. Okay. And we're going to hit Bench CPU. All right. So our final scores for the CPU, uh, CPU benchmark test is a 7,935.2 CPU multi-thread score and a 779.3 single thread processor score. All right, let's move on to the next test. Okay, next up we have Cinebench R23. We're gonna go ahead and run this test and take a look at the multi-core CPU score and the single core CPU score, right? Let's go ahead and run this test. Okay, so according to Cinebench R23, the CPU multi-core store is 10,778 points and the CPU single core score is 1,569 points, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and run the next test. Up next is the Fermark GPU stress test, OpenGL benchmark. We're gonna run the 1080p FHD preset CPU stress test. All right, and that completed. So the Fermark benchmark test scored 2,944 points. All right, and that's with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 Ti laptop GPU. All right, so let's go ahead and proceed to another test. All right, and for our next test, we're running Passmark, the performance test 10.2 evaluation version. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and run the test. All right, and as you can see, we have a pass mark rating of 4,764.9, and we're in the 60th percentile. The CPU mark score is 19,738.1. The 2D graphics mark is 476. The 3D graphics mark is 8,495.3. The memory mark is 2,929.4. And the disk mark is 30,218.0. All right. So let's run our final test and um, we'll give you a summary. All right, so we're recording our final benchmark test. This is 3D Mark Basic Edition Time Spy, and here we go. All right, and as you can see, we have our final 3D Mark Time Spy score of 4,440, a graphics score of 4,154, and a CPU score of 7,283. And that concludes our benchmark test. So overall, what do I think about the ASUS ROG Flow Z13? I think it's a great concept gaming tablet. Um, it could use some refinement, especially in the handling of it. The uh, CNC anodized chases could have some kind of rubberized texture or some kind of grooves to make it better at gripping. Um, I also think that the weight can be cut down a little bit more to be handled as a tablet. Uh, the keyboard typing is phenomenal. It's really good. The trackpad is okay. It's above average, but again, it's very clicky from the middle section all the way down. Um, also, the material, the soft felt material that the cardboard, uh, excuse me, the uh, keyboard cover is made out of, um, seems like it will wear out over time, and that's something that's very concerning. Um, in regards to cooling, if the temperature is under 50 degrees Celsius, it does passively uh, get cooled, and the heat is definitely mediated by the vapor cooler uh, the vapor chamber um, and then after 50 then it starts to spin up gradually um, in regards to gaming I see the temps don't exceed no more than 86 degrees Celsius and that is on performance mode I do not recommend turbo mode because it's not worth it the amount of heat and degradation and thermal throttling that the CPU and GPU undergo when using that mode so if you want to use this uh, fairly for just something portable uh, I would stick with the silent profile put the brightness on the 50% and also disable the backlit keyboard and even disconnect the keyboard altogether if you're really uh, pressed on battery life, all right? So generally design is cool. Um, the see-through window 
with the RGB that you can see the lighting in. It's very cool, it's very novel at first, but then over time, it just looks very unsightly to use it um, anywhere outside of home. <laughs> to be honest with you, it draws a lot of attention. So I think that in the future, they can find a way to have a cover or something to cover that up. Um, I think that that would be very cool. Other than that, I think the rest of the design is pretty neat. The screen is phenomenal, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 1920 by 1200p resolution, uh, 500 nits, Pantone validated, etc. So it's a very nice and bright screen, color accurate, etc. So I do like the screen, that's good. But again, if this is being marketed as a gaming tablet, um, the you know battery life is about five hours and 15 minutes on the Sonic profile. Go on a performance profile. You're doing gaming, 3D modeling, or uh, a CAD, or um, you know, video editing, or anything like that. Gaming, you're definitely going to take a hit. I've seen about maybe an hour and a half when fully gaming on here on the performance mode, um, and you know that's you know pretty concerning. Now, like I said, uh, in a world where the X13 doesn't exist, I would definitely buy this computer and use it as my daily driver. But because the X13 does exist, and to me, it's just overall a better. Uh, computer you know especially with efficiency in regards to battery uh, as far as it being you know feeling really solid lightweight um, etc I mean I just think as a two-in-one you can even turn it into a tablet if you need that it's just to me a better all-around laptop again that doesn't mean this is not good it just means I prefer the x13 and again that's my preference you may see otherwise all right so thank you guys for watching make sure you hit the thumbs up Subscribe to this channel if you're brand new and share it everywhere so we can get more people checking out this video. Thank you guys for watching. See you next video. Peace.